Uh, today's invocation of our anti Thank you. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the beauty all around us, for sunshine and burning bushes that delight our eyes and our souls. And we thank you for the beauty we get to partner in creating, but in service of self. Bless this time together, we pray, as we learn about the Franklin County of this ancient and services available for us and for our neighbors as we grow into. Amen. Amen. I am glad to leave this to the land of the United States of America and to the public for the nation and our God in the Thank you. And then President elect Jim Farmer. Are you ready to introduce any visitors or guests? Oh, is it our speaker? Okay, we'll be introducing him in a Anybody with announcements? Make your way. Uh, I've got a couple. Tim folks requested that if anybody is interested in being on the invitation of the pledge committee, please raise your hand. We're in need of just a couple more people. Pete Barnard, is that you? Did you raise your hand? You are, okay. Anybody else want to join just for the fun? Time or a couple of months? Going, going, gone. Uh, the other announcement I have is we are being visited uh, for an official visit with our district governor next Wednesday. I know we don't have an attendance or a um, attire rule, but I would hope that we would dress up a little. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's still fall, so I'm still here talking about the bird raffle. Uh, we've got 57 days left. We have raised $6,200 so far, um, which still puts us ahead of our first raffle, technically. Uh, 57 days is still plenty of time to raise a ton more money. I will be sending an email out later this week that you all can forward and pass along to your friends and family and even people you don't know. Um, so yeah, let's keep this train rolling. In other news, our Impact Club met last Wednesday at the Indian Run Falls Park in Historic Dublin and um, had a great turnout. They did their first service project. They picked up trash all along that park. We had probably four or five full bags of trash. Um, everybody had a great time and they had a social afterwards. And there is a social for the Impact Club coming up on October 18th at Getaway Brewing in Dublin. And I will make sure that that makes it into the newsletter. They also now have their own Facebook page uh, that we just started up yesterday. And so, Mohammed, I'm going to have you help out with that too to make sure our news gets to their page and their page news gets to us. Um, and then finally, the most exciting part about it is that we now have eight members, and so we are officially going to charge that organization. So, we've got it. So, yeah, if you know anybody that, um, you know, can't make it to this club but would love to get involved in new service and, and give back, please point them my way so we can get them engaged. Thanks. Just a reminder, everyone should have received an email from Andrew Sinaholz about our upcoming uh, food pantry drive project on, on October 21st. So have lots of times to sign up. You can sign up for a half shift if you like. So the whole thing runs from 9 to noon, but you can also sign up for a 9 to 10.30 or 10.30 to noon shift, a half shift. We still have uh, uh, the need for uh, some additional volunteers and even an opportunity to be captured with a location. So please sign up for that. Uh, yes, it's an Ohio State home, uh, home game uh, day, but it will be late afternoon or evening game because they're playing Penn State. So I, Jerry has the sign-up sheet, it looks like. 
And uh, it's pretty full, but uh, for sure, we'd like to ask one more volunteer for fresh time in Worthy. Well, on High Street, yes. So, so Mike Moulton. Will Mike Moulton is now added to the list. And we'll be very glad to hear that. Thank you. Anything else? Yes. Okay. I thought so. I want to know if she was talking about me dressing up next week. That's what not to wear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make you carry the pot so you can show. What I've already got a pot. <laughs> I get no respect. Uh, it's actually time for the uh, uh, football tickets. Now, um, Peggy is going to go this week to the game. Uh, did you make arrangements uh, satisfactorily? My oldest son is going, and he has been in touch with Sydney. And they've got everything planned over there. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Very, very good. Now you get a chance to go uh, to the Penn State game. And there's going to be two options today. One is a single ticket that is next to Cindy Wentz and uh, is in just a great spot in the Varsity O section. And uh, you'll love that. So uh, we have that ticket. And then we have an anonymous donor who uh, donated two tickets to Penn State. And those are going to be in 27A. And uh, uh, they're together, of course. And so those are going to be great tickets. So first, we'll do the ticket with uh, Cindy uh, because she actually um, is donating four tickets uh, total to each of the home games that were left. And so the next one is Penn State, and the auctioneer is now open for bids for that ticket. So who wants to go and sit next to Cindy Wentz? She also has a parking pass, so you can make arrangements with her, so you don't need to drive down there, pay $25 for uh, for parking or something like that, and also have to take a hike. So, uh, how much am I bid for one ticket to the Penn State game? Now, if I don't get any bids, the foundation doesn't get the money. And the, don't, the proceeds from both of these auctions go to the foundation. So, it's a Great cause, so just pay out the money and don't worry about it. And why should you do that? Because you can. You like I did, give it to the children or grandchildren. Or to the needy, I don't care. George, $100 for one ticket. That's grossly underpaid. But you know, George. Oh, one ten. One ten. Uh, that's the price up for the, the game. The game uh, probably will start at three thirty, not one ten. Uh, what do you mean, Boo? That's a closer bid, three thirty. To tell you the truth, I know how much these tickets are going for. So uh, don't try to fool the auctioneer. One ten. Do I hear 150? Yeah, Jim, that's a better bid, 150. Besides, you could enjoy the game. 75. 175, says the man with no money. <laughs> <Here's> <laughs> All right, let's get closer to 200 because you're going to get this pair next, and I'm not selling them for that, that amount of money. 175 once. It's for the foundation. Bid 200. It's only $25. Come on. No? All right. 
175 to George Norris. Oh, how much? I'll put in the extra 25 and make it 200. 200. There you go. Say five. <laughs> Thank you, George. <laughs> 225. Everybody ready? Sold. All right. Got to hit the gap. Oh, like an auction. <laughs> I saw that. I saw somebody. Looks like somebody hit it uh, more than once. <laughs> Too hard. All right. For a pair of tickets in 27A, uh, forget the row, I think it's uh, 16. Um, and uh, these tickets are just barely in the end zone, I think. Uh, but they're on the west side, and uh, and so you'll you'll be able to see the full halftime show uh, from those seats. How much am I bid for two tickets? Twenty-seven A Penn State game will probably start at three thirty. Okay. No bids. The auctioneer will bid a hundred dollars a ticket. Another bid. 125. 125. George is going to try to bid me up. This way, this way, he'll have three tickets beyond the two that he's sitting in and the four that his son is sitting in. I don't know what he thinks he's going to do. Well, he can just, you know. He can just move from seat to seat, that's all. All right, George, um, I'm bidding per ticket, and you bid uh, 125. How much? Yes, I said I was bidding $100 for each ticket. 150 right here. 150 for each ticket. All right, so now we have a bid of 300 do I have any more bids at 300? How many are there? Two. Four. <laughs> Two tickets for $300. All right, I have a bid in my pocket, 325, because somebody sent me a, a, a message, which I said you could do. So I have 325. For a pair of tickets, three twenty-five, three fifty, three fifty for a pair of tickets. We're going to have to move on. The speaker needs some time. <laughs> three fifty. Pocket bid is three seventy-five. Three seventy-five. Going once. Going twice. So. You can take your husband's head for the devil. Honey, you're going to sit down. You want them straight. I can't find a fellow sergeant that you've got to be pre Christmas, all of that. You can't dress that way. I, I, I wore these red and green because I wasn't going to be giving anybody any gifts with these tickets that I was auctioning <laughs> off. And the other thing is, Bought these, bought these pants on sale. Oh, Looks <laughs> like they were half off. Like that. <laughs> That's our fault. He tried that joke on us first, and we thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay. Okay. Well, since we've got Jerry Carey in the pond, can you hear me now? All right. Um, Again, let's just start out with some happy dollars. Who's happy today? Come on. Yes. Go ahead, Pete. Judy and I drive away next Monday to Siesta Key. She and May. Oh, that's a jealous, actually. Don, you had a happy dollar? Yeah. I have two of them. Oh, great. It was that my wife and I just got to meet our new, uh, I guess, we're 
great nephew of uh, California, who's barely two months old. He's barely old enough to disclose how comfortable taking you on an airplane to get here. Oh. And we just got back from a lovely vacation for So, hotel. Congratulations. Thank you. Any other happy dollars? Yeah. Damn it. This is on behalf of longtime club member Tom Wright. Oh. For those that didn't hear or read about the story, Tom's grandson is on the Thomas Wilkinson golf team. <laughs> Last Thursday, they were playing a match at Wilkinson Hills Country Club against St. Charles. A St. Charles player on the 12th hole, which is very difficult, long up Hill Park 3, got a hole in one. Oh my gosh. Tom's grandson was next to hit, also got a hole in one. Oh my gosh. Two balls in the cup. And I read that the odds of two players in the same foursome getting a hole in one on the same day at the same hole. 17 million to one. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, oh, right. And what? Any any other that's exciting. Any any other happy dollars? Yes, yes. It's so good to see your face. Yeah. I haven't been here for a while, but uh, on the 23rd of September, as you I celebrated comes at 62. Oh, oh. <laughs> Any other happy dollars? Keys? Judy's not here today because she's at a virtues. I don't know how you make long and short words into the name virtues. I don't know what that means. But she's on a two day event with people, 12 ladies from here at the orchard, who are in an outing overnight playing two rounds yesterday. And today, and staying in those nice guest houses. That they have, so he's having a brain in time. Nice, very nice. That is like happy dollars. Pins and badges. Everybody have this on. If not, throw it up. <clears throat> I hope you guys are sitting around chatting with your fellow Rotarians and guests and getting to know them. Because we're trying to have another mystery Rotarian day. So, again, if you guess and you're incorrect, you're going to put a dollar in. You got to remember, if you get clear at the end, and you don't get, you're going to put a dollar in anyway. So, you might as well try to guess. But if you do guess correctly, lunch is on me. So, and if maybe not today, for a future lunch, I will have a lunch. Party. <laughs> oh, I don't even know. Okay, here we go. This person, again, I ask typically the same questions, but this person, I ask, what was their first job? And this person's answer to me was at my present for my 15th birthday, my mother got me a job. Working in the warehouse, this is working in the warehouse of the company she worked at, hot gluing pieces of foam to the inside of twist on caps that were designed to go on waste containers inside of copying machines. Court of you, oh, any guesses? I thought Court was going to get it. Any guesses? You never know, had that discussion with a fellow or a <laughs> No guesses. Remember then, if you're not made a guess, you're going to throw a dollar in anyway. Oh, yes. What do you guess Jerry has? Oh, Jerry has? Is Jerry, are you the mystery? No. I'm a mystery, but not that. <laughs> well, on his 16th birthday, I don't even think warehouse has been invented yet. <laughs> Okay, second question. What was the riskiest thing you have ever done? And this person said, I quit my job working at a prestigious accounting firm downtown to start my own business. We ate ramen noodles and lots of vegetable-based yeah. dishes. My wife would only buy meat for one meal a week to try to save us more money. 
Who is that poor person? Are they in the room? I'm not going to see you. Do you have a guess? Do have a guess? Are you guessing, Steve? There you go, Dorothy. You want to do something? But I'm going to read his other answers because they're very interesting. Did she get? I buy her lunch. Who's the guest? Oh, it's Steve Payerly. See? Yeah. Okay. So please, if you don't phone him out to lunch, don't get him on the news. <laughs> uh, what was the most, most trouble you ever got into? And his answer was, I had so many speeding tickets in high school that my license was revoked for 90 days and I was privileged enough to get school and work privileges. However, on my way from high school to post secondary school during junior year of high school, I got another speeding ticket and was at risk of losing my license for two years. Ooh. Have you had a speeding ticket since? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm pretty good at talking with way out. <laughs> oh, you are in the car, yeah. You would be slipping. The last question, I always love this question when I ask for a hearing, is when did you know you were a true Rotarian? And Steve's answer was, I knew I was a true Rotarian when shortly after I started participating in club service projects with the Dublin Hope Working Kids Club and realized I was in the company of my people. One of the countless moment, moments was the packing of books for my Napoleon Book Drive during this year's presidency. That was a lot of work and a lot of fun, and I think we all got to know you really well during that period. So I love this answer. So, Guys, start talking to your fellow Rotarians and see if you can come up with the next time. Thanks. Congratulations. Great. Well, who knew that our two time president was such a scoffer? <laughs> okay, our speaker today is uh, Dennis Wheeler. He is the Support Services Outreach Supervisor for the Franklin County Office on Aging and has been with the agency for six years. Prior to this, Dennis was a Public Information Officer with the Ohio Department of Insurance. He is a native of Ironton, Ohio, and he enjoys the blessing of his wife, two grown daughters, and seven counting grandchildren. Um, I don't know for sure what Dennis is going to talk to us about today, but I'm hoping it's going to tell us how we can avoid aging altogether. <laughs> <laughs> Please help me in welcoming Dennis to the party. Thank you. I assume you want me to stand up here and talk into the mic? Yeah. Grab the mic and go wherever you'd like. That's awesome. I don't like standing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you for the privilege of coming here today. Uh, I really am grateful for this to share some information from the Franklin County Office on Aging. And uh, I have been with the agency for six years. Prior to that, I was with the Ohio County of Insurance, and I was raised on the high, uh, down on the river, if you're familiar with it. They got a great football team, and they're, kind of, they're doing really well again. Uh, it was great to be raised in Ironton. It's such a wonderful community. Uh, moved up here to go to Ohio State, and never left. And uh, when I went to Ohio State, I was taking a speech class, and the professor said, there's about 300 of the class. He said, anybody in here from Southern Ohio? So I shot my hand up, and I was proud of it. He said, would you come down front, please? So I walked to the front of the class there at Ohio State, the professor. As I walked forward, the professor said, I'm surprised you're wearing the shoes. <laughs> I thought, well, this is going to go. how do you pronounce C-R-E-D-K? And I said, Creed. He said, oh, you all said Craig. I thought, <laughs> And he said, I can't pronounce O I F when I said, you know, he said, oh, I mean, it's right. We do say it that way, but I knew what he was wanting me to say. I he was sad. I dropped the class. And I said, I'm going to say it here and take this for asking. So, again, thank you for allowing me to be here today. Uh, the Franklin County Office on Aging is funded by a county levy. Every five years, we're voted on by the residents of Franklin County. Senior services like you that a lot of people don't even know we exist. And so that's why I'm here today is to provide you with this information. It may not apply to you, but maybe you have a neighbor or a co-worker or a family member 
who would benefit from the services and the resources that are offered through the Franklin County uh, Office on Aging. We've been in existence now for 30 years. Our director is Shonda Wingo, and she is, she thinks outside the box. She is an incredible, incredible director, and it's a privilege to work for her. So they offered me this position just a few months ago. Uh, for the past, I'd say, 30 years, we're going really to focus mainly on the lower income zip codes. And I rightfully so. But when I came home, I said the entire county votes on this letter, and it's approved by the entire county. And we have old results in every corner of this county that would benefit from our services. You know, they were in agreement, so they said run with it. So that's what I'm doing now. So that's why I'm really grateful to be able to come to the Rotary Club today and share this information. I hope you got a handout, maybe you're taking some of them, you didn't get them. And on the back of this handout is kind of an overview of all the services and resources that we offer. Anyone over the age of 60 that lives in Franklin County are eligible for the services. No one is income ineligible. The only people say, I make mean, too much money, that is, that is not true. We have a sliding fee scale. We have some people who call in and say, hey, I'd like to have the services, but I don't want to pay more money for this. Absolutely fine. You know, they still pay the full price for the services, but they do not have to rebuild their income uh, to us. So I'm just going to go over these very, very briefly. I'm not going to take much of your time. And by the way, I've got a table of resources over here. You can also sign up for a newsletter that comes out monthly into your email box, not just information about our agency, but all kinds of things going on around the county. And there's additional flyers over there that go into more detail for what's on the back of this one. But we have five departments within the Office on Aging. One is Adult Protective Services. We have two case management teams that investigate any allegations of exploitation, uh, abuse, uh, neglect, and that includes self-neglect. And COVID really brought a lot of this to the forefront. Uh, we had a lot of older adults here in Franklin County who were because we were in their homes didn't get out that family members took advantage of them financially. And what happens is, well, we had one lady in particular, by the time that everything got reported, her granddaughter had taken over $200,000 out of her account. And, you know, grandma didn't want to report it. You know why? Family members. They don't want the family member to get in trouble. We just had an older lady, 83 years old, just a couple of weeks ago, admitted to Grant Hospital for two million dollars each her with a two doctor. And she would not earn anything. And so it you know, was thicker than Mark, so they say. But if you if you have a suspicion that a suspicion that somebody's being exploited or abused or neglected, uh, uh, hoarding is on the rise among older adults. And, We've had a lot of home care companies who have gone into paint somebody's home. They said, there's so much stuff in there. We cannot begin to clean it. So we can go in and assess that and help out with that. So we have two wonderful case management teams. It is not the goal of adult protective services to go in and to rip that older adult out of their home. It's to go in and see what can be done to help. Now, then we have a kinship program. More and more grandparents are now raising their grandchildren. And sometimes they're raising children that are not even their own. And we do have uh, three weeks ago an 84 year old lady that was raising two of her grandchildren. And she called us because that day she got five more grandchildren. So she's 84 and she's raising seven children. Now, what happens is if they're on Social Security, very limited income, all of a sudden they're raising these children and they, you know, they don't even have to have legal custody. As long as they can prove that that child is in their home and they're raising them, we're able to assist. Now, with this program, because we do get some uh, federal funding, we can go as low as age 55, and sometimes we've gone a lot lower than that, because not every grandparent is over the age of six. So we can help with bedding and clothing and rent and utilities. I had a lady that called in a few weeks ago, and she called me, so I was able to assist her. She had just gotten two teenage grandchildren, and she said, you know, my phone does, didn't work, but it wasn't a big deal. I just used the microwave. She was like, now I've got two children. I need a stove. So we were able to give her a new stove. She called up and she was crying. She said, God bless you. Thank you for providing the stove for me. So we're able to help with that. That is the kinship support. Then we have caregiver support. And these are non-paid caregivers uh, who are taking care of a loved one. They could be 60 or older. Uh, it could be somebody who's 18 to 59 with a permanent disability. 
But again, you can see the different services that we're able to provide for that, like any condiment supplies, durable medical equipment, institutional respite care. And again, these are short term services that we're able to provide. And for most of these, there are no income requirements for that. We're able to assist. We have a minor home repair department. Uh, again, the word minor, this is not extreme home makeover. And we do have some different guidelines for that because you do have to be the homeowner. Uh, you do have to be up to date on your taxes, and there's only so much you can have in, in assets. But they have changed those guidelines recently so that more people are eligible. So they can help with things like installing uh, grab bars in the house or broken windows, uh, or the gutters are leaking, or the stairs are rickety, or they need a wheelchair ramp. They're able to assist with that. Now, that department, I can tell you right now, is, is behind this. It's not because they want to be, uh, but there is just so many requests that are coming in, and they're trying to get those taken care of. I want you to know that all of the services that are provided through the Franklin County Office on Aging are contracted. They have a labor contract, a binding contract with the county government. So if we have over 100 companies that we do business with, that we send out to serve and provide these services and resources. And so they have to be compliant with the contract. And we make sure that they are. We have a quality improvement team that does that. And then we have our senior options program, which is our largest program. Currently, we're serving almost 14,000 senior adults uh, here in the county. Some of the services that we have are adult daycare. Uh, it could be that an older couple's there and and maybe he needs more care than she does. And a couple of days a week, she just needs to be able to run some errands. So we're able to get her husband into adult daycare for a couple of days a week. The emergency response system, you know the button that you see, remember the commercial help, I call them, I can't get up. We have those, we have the ones that are like wristwatches. And we have the ones that no matter where you go, it will track where you are. So if you fall, you're able to get assistance. Uh, no, I mean, no matter where you go, you're able to get assistance. Used to be they only wanted you to push the button if you were having an emergency. Now they want you to press the button every day and say, I'm alive, I'm here, you know, just checking in to let you know I'm here. We have medication dispensers. And what happens is say, say you're forgetting to take your medication. And so you have your granddaughter come over, she helps you, you put all the medication in the dispenser. And what it does is like you're supposed to take medicine at two o'clock, two o'clock, it shoots out that medication. If you don't take the medication, it sends a message to your granddaughter and says, I'm already paying for medication. And so they're able to keep our money. That's a need need service. I just heard recently about a portal that they've come out with. We do not have this. I hope we never get this. When you go to the bathroom, it sends a report to your children and to your doctor on what's in your mess. <laughs> now, I think that's TMI. And I don't want my grandkids to know. My kids know when I'm going to the bathroom and what I ate. I just think that's too much information. So I hope we never offer that. <laughs> we have home delivered meals. And right now, through the end of this year, we started this during COVID. The county commissioner is keeping extending it. And I hear that the great plan is going to be extended for another year. But right now, it's through the end of this year. Anyone over the age of 16 and older in Franklin County can get home delivered meals absolutely free. There's no income requirements. There's no cost. Absolutely true. A lot of people will say, you know what? I don't want to, I don't like those because I've heard them. You know, we use five different companies and they can cater to the dietary needs low salt, diabetic, even puree meals. They're on a feeding tube. You can get a hot meal every day or once a week, frozen meals, put them in the refrigerator. They have breakfast options, lunch options, dinner options, snack options. We found out that some of the older adults who are very young in income, they had a pet. They were getting the meals, but they were only eating half of the meal and giving the other half of the pet. So we have a couple of companies that are actually taking free pet food so that they're not doing that. So those are, pardon? Now you're talking. Yes, sir. I'm going to sign up for free pet food. You know. Now that, it, and it also depends on what's available. Sometimes they, they don't have that to distribute. But we do have five different companies that we use. And I'm telling folks, try it. If you do, have you been to McDonald's lately? You know, you get a breakfast or McDonald's is almost 10 bucks. So if you get one meal a day, that's 10 bucks back in your pocket. You don't like it, it's a cost you again. And if you come, don't like to come here with calling, we can switch you to another company. And I have been to most of the companies, I've toured them and I've sampled their food. 
and the food's really good. I weighed 150 pounds before I started to that. We do have holy recipes, and that's lighthouse seafood, respite care, which is no heavy duty care, and then there's also personal care. That's for a person that might need assistance with bathing, some of those personal needs. There again, due to staffing shortages, not just in Franklin County, nationwide. I don't know where the workers have gone since COVID, but they're not out there. It's very difficult to find those services, but we will still uh, take the information and try to get a report and try to get that service provided. Nutritional supplements like Lucerna and Sure, those foods, those types of products, you can have those delivered right to your door. Incontinence supplies, durable medical equipment, all of that can be taken care of. Transportation services, three types of transportation. One is medical. We do not want anyone to miss a medical appointment. So medical transportation is pretty much unlimited. We have over 30 transportation companies who are contracted with. Then we have um, expanded transportation. That is if you're wanting to go to the grocery, you want to go to church, you want to go visit your cousin on the other side of town. That is limited to 75 miles a month. Now that doesn't sound like much, but with our contract with the transportation companies, we already have preset mileage from zip code to zip code. So if I, I live in Westerville, I was coming over here at Orlington in Yellow Cab, they only have a certain amount of mileage that they can build for. So they could pick me up, they could drive all the way around 270 to bring me to Worthington. They can't build any more than that preset mileage. So that's really a great, great benefit. Plus, they don't have to pick the drivers either. And then we have escort transportation. This is very limited to just six hours a month. This is if an individual knows they're going to go to the eye doctor, their eyes are going to be dilated and they're not going to be able to see you right home. So with escort transportation, we pick up the client, we take them to the appointment, we wait with them, we take them home and make sure they get into their home okay, so that they're safe and sound. One medical appointment can, can wipe that out, but that is by the hour, not by the mileage. To sign up for services, you just call into our office, 525-6200. It takes about 20 to 25 minutes online to submit all the information, and then referrals can be made out. Hopefully, services will be able to be provided. We'll be able to find somebody, a lot of our vendors to provide those services. Yes, sir. How many residents of Franklin County are you serving in the course of the year? Well, right now, on a regular basis, we're serving almost 14,000. Now, we do have, like last month, we had almost 700 new uh, older adults signed up. We had 300 that were disenrolled. Now, that could have been due to death, or they moved out of the area, or whatever. And I will tell you, I was at the Ohio State Fair back in July for Senior Adult Day. And so we had all these vendors set up. So there are people from all over the state coming through. We have people from other counties coming through, and they're going, we, we don't have any departments. And they don't. And we're very fortunate, very blessed in Franklin County to have this abundant resources available to the older adults within our county. So we're very fortunate, very blessed. There's you know, some of the more like Ironton, where I'm from, there's almost hardly anything available down there. Uh, we have a friend down there with multiple sclerosis, and there's almost nothing available for them. So we're very fortunate, very blessed. I thank you for voting and approving this levy every five years. We just got approved this past November. So we still have four more years in this levy cycle. So thank you. The money is being put to good use. Again, we're very fortunate in Franklin County to have these services available. Anyone over the age of 16 older in the county are available for these services and services. So I'm going to stop gathering and turn that over. Yes, sir. Any questions? Yes. You said you, you've, been, you've been in business for 30 years. 30 years, yes. And the average age of uh, Franklin County people has gone up during that. Absolutely. Period. Yeah, absolutely. So how many of us are in the 50 plus category? In the 50 plus, I do not know. I do know that exponentially, the older adult population is going to surpass the younger population in the next 10 years here in Franklin County. This is considered a very age-friendly community. Uh, and a lot of I mean, a lot of communities are like the board and the government. They've got additional resources beyond what we all want to go Yes, sir. I mean, a group of us 30 years ago is significant in my mind in thinking about the entity that Barbara Locker, prominent uh, real estate place up Burlington along the way. 
was the chair along with a number of people from Ohio State University and other civilians, including myself as treasurer, uh, the Ohio Federation for Aging Research. And in a word, your aging office on aging happily put us out of work. We help our people help get your levy passed in five years, et cetera. Uh, but, uh, but you were hitting all the marks of what we were trying to do. Still, then we we put it back to Ohio State to create research portion of it. And uh, that was a great program to start 30 years ago. Might have been 100 and, years and later, the State. 100 years late, starting to start 100 years. And a lot of states still didn't have a lot of research. I was just they there two weeks ago. It was incredible. By the way, Brutus is an older one. He's out. Uh, we, we learned that at the scene. Again, thank you. Uh, really appreciate this time. I don't guess now. Okay. Okay. I have two questions. Um, one, what is your annual spend in serving all those people? Our budget is for the life cycle is 51 to one year. And then secondly, do people use the service as um, uh, addition to rehabbing, like coming out of the hospital with you know, surgery and, you know, recapping. Well, yeah. Our main objective is to help people age in place, stay in their own home, so they don't have to go to assisted living. Okay. If they're in assisted living or nursing home, we are unable to provide services. They have to be living independently in a house, a farm, or whatever. Uh, yes, so when they're coming out of the hospital and they're going home, we are able to connect with them. In fact, we just have a pilot program that just started where we do have a case manager at OSU East. Uh, to go into the rooms while the clients or the patients are there and say, you're going to be getting out, what, how can we help? What can we do to make sure it's better for you and the help? So, the new pilot program will be successful. Hopefully, we can branch out to the other hospitals. Any yeah. other? Yes, sir. Uh, I work in the Christian of the family. Uh, we have folks coming in and uh, they need services. I've got a phone number. If we wanted to help them sign up for something we do through the website. Uh, the website is uh, officeonaging.org. And when the person calls in, sometimes you know they may be a little hesitant or they may be afraid or nervous. And as long as that person that say you're, you're calling in with somebody helping, as long as they get verbal permission on the phone, you can assist them with providing that information. Because a lot of times they're just uncomfortable doing that. So we certainly understand. Nowadays, I've worked in the government for a number of years. I've never seen a government agency that bids for backwards uh, to serve uh, their clients. And our director, one of her models is we try to never say no. We want to serve. So that's another model. We're from the government. We're here to help. We're here to help. We really are. You know, that's great. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, the likelihood that you will actually save us money on the other side from Medicaid, Medicaid. Um, do you have any idea about how well you will return to prevention? Prevention? Pardon? Prevention? Prevention? Care, care prevention through our services? We do probably do not have a statistic on that, but we do get reports from a number of people, especially when I'm out of the dens, people come up and say, thanks to you, my father-in-law did not have to go to a nursing home uh, because we were able to provide the services to help them maintain their independence. We do not coordinate with insurance, but nor do we uh, want to be repetitive with our services. So a lot of the Medicare Advantage plans now have things like transportation services, uh, and we wanted to have that. Uh, but we're not going to, we're not going to uh, duplicate those services. That's not being a good steward uh, of our funds. Now there is a program, a Medicaid waiver program called Passport, and with that, people get uh, medical transportation, but it's very limited. So we can still provide the medical transportation only, and it's family transportation, but the medical transportation can only take in after they've exhausted what they have that month from Passport. So we try to work with it because we don't want anybody to list medical We want to make sure they do it. Again, with transportation, same issue. 
staffing shortage after COVID. Uh, just here, real quick. Uh, Pre COVID, on an average day, Columbus Yellow Cab, and that's our largest transportation provider, they would have 150 cabs out in Columbus driving around picking up people. Post COVID, they're fortunate to have 50. They have 50, they feel like they had a successful day. So, just you know, some of the challenges that we're facing. We are looking into things like snow removal, uh, lawn care, uh, grocery shopping, where you go pick up the groceries. Do the grocery. So those are some of the things that we're looking at to help the older population within our county, our neighbors, our family members, so they can stay independent and stay in their own home. So thanks to you, Franklin County Office on Aging exists. I hope it does for many more years to come. I'd like to say because I want to use it when I get older, right in the Delaware County. So I'll, I'll never be able to get to use it. So uh, you thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, for anybody that's curious, you should head out the table over there. There's some good information, and I carry a little purse, and there is this little teeny tiny thing that looks like a credit card, and it's hand sanitizer. So thank you. That's great. And um, before we end and go to the wrap, I want to thank um, Jennifer for being our cashier today, Nick for being our raffle person, and Jim Allen for being our greeter, Tom Rice for our invitation and pledge. Thank you all for your service and what you do to fill it. And Tim is here. If anybody wants to add their name to the list of invitation and pledge volunteers, he would appreciate anybody to jump in. Okay, Nick, we have a raffle. Raffle today. We have twenty-six dollars in the pot. Ace is up to one sixty-seven. Raffle first. Hey, you got it. All right. Last four digits are two, two, eight. Zero. 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 Seven zero. It's ten. Is that another winning streak? There's too many cards. Get the fan out. Is that your shirt?